Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modeling Bench and I've got another review for you today uh, If you remember yesterday I gave you a review of the um, Merit kit, the M19 tank, trans tank transporter which has got a Diamond T989 I think uh, truck which pulls it um, Beautiful trucks, Diamond T's, love them to bits As I said in that video I had a friend who, um, who had a real one So um, anyway we're going to talk about today is mirror models and mirror models are an, an older company that, that have now changed into thunder models so um if you're familiar with thunder models you've got all the scowls and everything and uh, there's a i think there's a tractor and the, the other bits and pieces they are beautiful kits uh, and i've seen a couple of reviews and people have given them a little bit of a hard time and i think it's totally undeserved um I absolutely love them. So what we're going to look at today are these older older mirror models kits. And I've got here, this is the uh, Diamond T 968 cargo truck, as you can see here. And this is the hard top version. And what Libor does, um, mirror models is owned by Libor, same as uh, Thunder models is. Um, and basically what he does, he sort of makes a, an early and a late version of everything. So I think he's also done a late, late version. So you've got the early version would have been a hard top and then you had like the later version would have been a soft top and then the later later version would have been a hard top with a few changes and this is what he does and you'll sometimes see in his kits in the instructions he'll say to you um you know for if you want to build this model depicting a russian lend lease vehicle refer to my website and he'll give you a website address and he'll tell you which bits to leave off or to add certain parts on to make it into a russian lend lease vehicle it's really really good um Mirror Models started out as a resin uh, company. They, they used to supply resin kits. So as you can imagine, the detail in these is very, very good. And they've got a little bit of a different approach to the, um, to the injection molding that other, the other manufacturers have. They're certainly not for beginners, and it's not a sort of model I'd pick up as a second kit. Um, there's a lot of, um, lot of difficulties to making these, but they are very, very nice indeed. So this is the um, cargo truck, hard top, and I've actually got this one on the go. Um, this one here, this is the soft top, uh, like T96A, it's basically the same chassis and the same engine and everything, but we've got the, the soft top cab, as you can see here, um, and we've got the, the wrecker obviously on the back, and this wrecker unit here is absolutely gorgeous, and uh, we'll show you some of that made up after we've done the review, and the review is going to be of this one here, now this is basically the same kit, Okay, so you've got the soft top here, and then this is the hard top. And um, absolutely beautiful. This one isn't started. This has got to be the most full box I've ever seen of a kit. So we'll have a quick look at the box front, have a look around the sides, and then we'll look inside. So as you can see, we've got a very, very glossy image there with all the light reflections in it. And we can see US Diamond T 969A Wrecker Hard Top Cab Precision Plastic Model. And boy, that is precision is the right word. Um, 135th scale, kit number 35802, and then on here we've got some history of the model, so you can pause there if you want to and have a read of that. Very interesting um, information on there. And on the end of the box here, full plastic kit, 500 parts, full engine and chassis detail, bit of masking tape there, finely produced wheels and tyres, additional PE detail set, glue and paints are not included, suitable for average and advanced modellers, keep away from children, this is not a toy. Average and advanced modelers, that's the key one. If you, if you are new to the hobby and you think, well, I fancy building that, um, it will it will kill you. <laughs> it will finish you off. Uh, I have actually seen one of these built at a show and I've every, only ever seen one built. And um, a lot of the parts were left off. And I spoke to the guy who built it and he said he just couldn't, couldn't handle all the tiny, tiny parts and everything. But uh, it still looks absolutely beautiful. It's got a very, very scale, very, very kind of flimsy, delicate look to it when it's done. And you can see here, made in China for mirror models, Kilkey Clare, Ireland. So um, that's where they come from. So basically, we'll get this open and we'll have a look inside the box. Okay, so there we go. As you see, massive uh, reflection of light, which I've got directly above now for better lighting. So um, we'll have a bit of fun now as well. Now, the Titanic, um, as I said in my last review, 
Um, I, I, I'm just about ready to now start fitting those propeller shafts onto the uh, onto the actual hull. So I shall start filming again on that and we'll start working on part 18. So um, I did say that in my last video. I also said that with U9 I'm actually waiting for some reference material for that one. So I haven't given up on them, I haven't put them to one side, but I will be starting, maybe even later today I'll start filming again on the Titanic. Um, but it's interesting that even though I say that, the number of comments I get asking where Titanic is. So uh, let's see how many we get. <laughs> um, see who actually bothers listening to the rubbish I talk about. So let's have a look in this box. And as we can see here, this, this model wins the award for most cram box ever. Um, there is no room in there whatsoever. This is no um, Revell kit, you know, that Titanic I reviewed where you could have got the whole kit in a box this size, but the actual box itself wouldn't hardly fit on the desk. So in there, we've got lots and lots of sprues, all separately bagged, and uh, we've got some instructions here. So let's put the kit to one side, and first of all, have a look at the instructions. Now, as I say, I am nearly finished on one of these. And I've done the soft top. This one here is nearly finished. And so it's good actually to review this kit after you've built it because, as I said in my last review, inbox reviews are great. They can tell you all about the detail of the engineering and how crisp and clean the moulding is and everything. But it doesn't tell you how well it goes together. It doesn't tell you about issues with the model. So this is good that I can actually review this having practically built one. I'm just going to check the camera. Yeah, that is all in. Okay. So the first thing you'll notice is very sort of garage kit like, very small run like. You've got this, these all separate A4 sheets of paper all printed out, folded in half and st stuck inside the box. Um, so it isn't a proper book, it isn't a proper manual, but having said that, I actually quite like it because you can sort of just work on one, you can just have this sheet next to you on the bench and it's, it's not a great big book getting in the way, like, you know, a great big double-sided manual or something. But, you know, each one's got its pros and cons. Again, there's a downside to this. There's no real colour call-outs in there. There's nothing telling you what colour to paint anything, um, which is a shame. You need to do some research of that. Um, but there is some history on here. There is some assembly uh, tips and, da and everything on here. And they're telling you which um, cements to use. I do know that when Libor first released these kits, uh, one or two of them had issues with the... Um, the sprue that the plastic wouldn't actually glue together with normal plastic cements so um he actually sent sprues out to everybody that bought those kits but that was a long long time ago now so um i doubt you'll get that problem now so you start off uh, assembly with this one with the wheels and if you notice hallelujah it's got plastic wheels no vinyl tires you don't need resin wheels for this the kit wheels that come in the kit are gorgeous okay you've got a bit of seam work to do you've got some cleaning up to do but other than that they are absolutely beautiful and they are really really nice um, very very accurate very beautiful wheels once done and i'll show you some in a minute so into the engine you've got the main engine halves going together and riding the heads and the um takeoff plate for the front of the engine there then we're building the bell housing gearbox back plate and then some more detailed bits going on here and as you can see it's very detailed and each little part it takes you through each assembly and this is quite nice because sometimes you'll find you'll get all of this here will be in one diagram and it's kind of a little bit confined whereas you can see here one part one part three parts two parts you know here one two three four five parts and it's showing you where they go and how they fit and everything it's not just you know the part with an arrow like that it's showing you that that goes on there but you know with complex bits like this it's telling you which angle to put them in and everything and it does go together absolutely beautifully I mean, here you've got one part look, for the carburetor. So, um, yeah, very, very nice. And then we're adding more bits and pieces here. With oil filters, I think. Um, these old engines, I, I, some of you will know, I've got a Ford GPW, which is a basic Willys Jeep. And um, if you're into your engines and stuff, you know how they work. You know that modern engines, they take the oil from the sump, they put it through the pump, they pump it through an oil filter, and then it gets fed through into your engine. These old engines, what they did, they... They, they picked up the oil from the sump and then some of it went to the filters and some of it went to the engine. So the oil was, it was partially filtered. So if you like, you could have one cubic inch of oil in your engine that had never been filtered. It probably is possible. But uh, yeah, they got like a drain going back into the block. Ever so funny. Great big oil filters as well. Huge, great things. Anyway, I digress. So you've got the um, supports here for the air filter and everything. You've got the air filter going on there with the pipes, giving you some instructions here on how to assemble it all, just in case it's a bit confusing. 
And then we've got water pump there, I believe. Well, that's going to be a vacuum pump, I guess. Um, pulleys going on there. You've got a photo etch um, fan for the front of the engine, which is really nice. Radiator assembly. Notice again, all separate parts. Um, if you're familiar with these sort of trucks with the open radiator on the front, quite often manufacturers will mould that piece in one um, and then have the bottom and the top or either mould it in two halves going together and you always end up with this awful seam or a join or whatever. But this is all separate so it makes it absolutely gorgeous. And then you've got the grill going on the front there, which as again, I'll show you in a minute. I think I've got one here. It is beautiful. Starting onto the axles here, so you've got the front axle assembly, got the balls on there, it is, you can make it steerable. If you don't glue these parts, so you just glue these halves together around that ball, then you, you can make it steerable. And again, I can show you that in a second. And then over the page, um, front axle, you're putting this high rod on. What you do there is drill it out, put a couple of brass pins in and a couple of um, little plastic discs, glue them on and you can make it steerable. I'll show you that. Got the actuators for the brakes there, and then we're starting on the chassis. Winch, winch going into the chassis, adding in the cross members, and this is really the proper way to build a chassis. Put the cross members in one side, make sure they're all square, let them set, and then put the other side on. And that way, you can keep your chassis nice and straight, and you don't end up with it being like this, or like this, or like this, or like that, or indeed bent up and down. So, um, yeah, that's the right way to do it. And then what I always do is um, sellotape, if you can, a steel rule, something like a six inch rule like this, if you've got enough room, build up one side, get, get one side with all the cross members in it, and then sellotape that onto the top of the cross members and onto one side of the chassis, and that will keep everything on that one side square and straight. And then when you glue the other side on, it will keep it all parallel. That is, of course, as long as your chassis rails are straight. Some chassis rails are, are angled and bent and stuff, so be careful. So, um... There's the rear part there going in for the rear towing eye, or uh, the rear pintle, should I say. Got some air tanks here, some more cross members going in. Um, it's going that way, isn't it? And then we're on to page five. So you can see it getting pretty complex now, little bits and pieces, little greeblies going on. And some of these parts are absolutely tiny. And the way they make the, them fit is, is beautiful. They actually have recesses in the chassis rails, which I'll show you. And then the part sits in the recess so then you can put some Mr. Service around, you get that real proper sort of part of it on look rather than like being a stuck on part. Um, I'll show you in a minute when I, when, I, when I show you the built up assemblies. And then we've got the um, hangers going on for the springs. Then we've got the springs themselves going in. Um, B53 and B54, the springs are in halves and they are beautifully moulded. Axle going on. And then you've got the lever arm shock absorbers there, so you've got the rod for them going in. Steering arm there. And then the other side with the shock absorbers, drag link there, and the steering drop arm there. And then we're going to build up the actual mounts for the rear suspension. And you've got these takeoffs, these air air pressure or air takeoffs there for the um, for the back end of the chassis. Try and get this apart. Come on. It's only doing this because the camera's on. There we go. And then we've got more. The final drive here going together. Rear axle, final drives. Rear leaf springs, adding the pin tool, uh, and then we've got air brakes here, perhaps rear air brakes here. They are absolutely stunning, all these little bits and pieces. And uh, yeah, really, really nice. And then we've got sheet seven now, adding more actuators for the brakes. And then you've got these uh, support screws on the top of the leaf springs, and this little piece on the end. That could have been made in one part, I think, made, rather than be made in two halves, but nevertheless, it goes together fine. And then you've got these little... Um, Drives here, the kind of chain drive things, chain drive covers, if you like. Um, they're going in there. That's what they look like anyway. Um, and then we've got the, uh, actually not chain drives at all, they're just mounts. And then we've got the um, them going on there. And you can see we've got DD and CC, and it's showing you here which one's which. Um, and then we're going to add these arms. And as I say in previous, uh, as in my previous um Review, as we're looking for, leave these arms off until your chassis is built and these. Let the axle swing until everything is, all the wheels are on and everything and then you can put it down on a flat base and then you can fit them and you know that you're not going to be twisting the axle because if that one is slightly longer than that one, say, just say, you could be pushing your axle up so it ends up only sitting on the back pair of wheels or something. The front wheels could be up in the air. Um, adding on the cover there for the back end of the final drive. 
and then we're going to add some more of these um, these these brake actuators there going into the uh, into the brake back plates, and then we're going to start on the transfer box here, going in the back of the gearbox, all beautifully detailed. And that's going there. You've got a little um, prop shaft there, a little tiny thing you can see, and then the prop shaft there. We've got the uh, extension there on the back of the transfer box, and then riding in these mounts here. These are the actual mounts that go in for the for the actual frame, the actual frame here of the um, of the wreck of the wrecker. Okay, so that's going in there. Then we're on to page nine, and you can see more little details going in the chassis. We're going to fit the engine, um, fitting the engine mounts here, adding the radiator, adding the exhaust, fitting the starter motor. Okay, and then all this is so. When well, you see this in a minute, you won't believe your eyes. This is all the um, handbrake and gear change mechanisms and everything, all beautifully moulded, all beautifully presented. Lovely seats, lovely cab. Um, little PE part to go on top, that's the little flap, the air, air intake vent. Beautiful dashboard, we've got lovely pedals going in here. Um, see, see, oh, this is the mounting for the actual steering column. You can see it's like a little like a little U-bolt type thing. Steering wheel going in there, they're telling you to use the port three wire for the indicator stalk. Um, put them through, but don't glue them yet because they're gonna have to be glued to the chassis. So it's all gonna be flopping around. Um, Sebo U4, they're telling you to just glue the top and side, then S20 at the same level, without a window frame, then blah. So yeah, again, you've got a frame around there, which is a nice touch, rather than just having the clay, the glazing. Um, as I say, I haven't actually built one with a cab yet, so that's all new to me. And then we're adding our, adding some 0.3 wire for the handles here. Um, we're gonna add in the um, clear parts there, adding the bulkhead to the roof, See, it's a multi-part uh, body, so you're going to get all your alignment and everything. And as I said in the other one, the doors are separate, so you have the option of having the doors open or closed. Um, got the air vent going on the top there. Massive mirrors going on there, which I would leave off until the very end. And then we've got the vents in the vent, the vented, um, the vented front fenders there, and then the engine side covers going on. You may wish to have those in an open position, so. Don't glue those on yet, you may change your mind. And also you want to get the fenders on, have the radiator in place, get the cab on, and then while you're gluing the cab on and doing the engine and everything, put the, the, the actual cab and these engine covers together and then glue the cab with all this in place. And then you know you're going to get nice, really tidy joins. Um, we've got the fender supports there going in. You'd have thought you'd have had those in there. And then you've got the... Um, that's, that's the uh, prop shaft there, the, the drive shaft for the winch going in. And then, the funny place to put it in, I, I've put mine in before that. Uh, and then you've got the front bumper going on, light guards which are beautifully moulded, headlights, side marker lights, uh, which are lovely. And then we're going to add our wheels, which are going to go in. And then we're going to build up the fuel tanks, supports for the fuel tanks, they're going in underneath. And then we've got FF and GG as you can see there. And then you're going to be adding um, little bits and pieces. You've got the actual rails there. Sorry, I'm off the screen probably. You've got the rails here for the actual wrecker body. This little kit here, they, they do this as a separate kit. Little work of art. It's a compressor, a 35th scale compressor. It's gorgeous. <laughs> it's absolutely lovely. And I think I've got one here to show you built up. If I've not, I can put my hand on one in a minute. Um, yeah, they are absolutely stunning. Okay, we haven't got a separate sheet there. And then starting on the record body, this is a work of art. This is all beautiful. And then you've got your tool trays and everything there going in. And all these tools, are, I'll show you in a minute, they're beautiful. You've got, um, I'm guessing these are going to be propane bottles for welding and cutting, whatever. Um, and then you've got the winch uh, body there going together. You've got the main frame. And you've got all sorts of instructions here telling you how it all goes together. And this is the main frame here for the winch. You've got the plastic or PE gears you can use in here. You've got Y10 or Y11, you can use PE or plastic in there. Um, you've only got a few teeth on there because you obviously can't see the back half of it. So it's not a quadrant, it's actually a gear, but they're just not molding all the teeth on. And then you're gonna add all this, the mechanism for the winch pulleys into there for the, for the, um, for the ropes. And then all this mechanism's going on here. I think this is all the control mechanism for everything. And then more bits and pieces, adding in your tanks there. And then lots and lots of bits of greeblies. 
and then we've got these um, pulleys that go up over the top which are absolutely stunning when you see them made up and then all of this here it's all very nice it's all very beautiful and you've got here the um, there's your hook with all the, the, the uh, chain wheel and everything on it and then you've got the the side stands these are the side supports um, so you can leave those separate inside so they slide in and out and then if you want to make a handle on there you can with some 0.2 wire I mean what other manufacturer tells you use 0.2 wire um, chain drive going in there adding the uh, whole complete assembly onto there adding the um, the actual tray onto the back you can see we've got the compressor going in there which is highly visible on the built-up model and then we're adding this bridge support in here building up these um, these little end pieces here for the uh, I'm just trying to think now from memory. Yeah, they are the end pieces for the for the actual stays at the back, the supports. Uh, these are the arms, whatever you want to call them. And they do look, I'll show you them in a minute. They look bloody beautiful when they're made up. Made up. And then you've got all this mechanism here for the pulleys over the end of the ropes and everything. Which is really, really nice indeed. And then here's our final sheet. And it's just showing us putting these in there. What I've actually done here, I've drilled that and put brass pins in here to get a nice uh, location. These rear mud guards going on, they are beautiful. I'll show you those in a second. And then you've got 0.3 millimeter wire for the handles. Um, and they say these front mud guards here going on and assemble all wheels at the end. At the end. I'm guessing they mean the end there rather than the end. And then this here is a diagram from the real thing. Um, just thinking, it tells you there to assemble all wheels at the end. Didn't they tell you back here somewhere to fit the wheels? Yeah, the wheels are fitted. And you get to the end, it's telling you several wheels at the end. So, um, as I say, this is a one man band, it's like a short run kit almost. So, you expect little mistakes like that. But believe me, there are some little bits and pieces in the instructions where you think, well, you know, like that drive shaft for the, for the winch, you may as well put that in when you put the winch in. Um, there's no need to fit it right at the end. There's another couple of bits and pieces, like the starter motor for the engine. I think that tells you to put it in later, but you can put it in beforehand. And um, but other than that, I mean, there's no reason why you can't put it in at the end, but you may as well put it in the beginning because it makes life a lot easier for painting and everything. But other than that, the instructions are really, really cool. And then here we've got some um, CAD drawings there, and it's telling you how to actually rig the, the actual uh, crane winches themselves. So you can see there, you know, very, very clearly done. All the instructions on how to do it. And then we've got an image there of the real dashboard and there are the decals you get in the kit. So um, there is an additional detail in the set um, from LZ Models, which is Libra. I'm not sure if it's her name, but uh, LZ Models, LZ Models. Um, if you've experienced missing or damaged part, contact us directly for replacement at info at mirrormodels.com. Believe me, Libra is a great guy. He's very, very approachable, very, very friendly chap. And um, yeah, you, you, won't regret, uh, you won't regret communicating with him if you do. So that's the instructions look through okay and I seem to have got myself mixed up here so that's that's the instructions look through let's have a look at some of the parts um, I think what I'll do is get some of these no well because they're all resealable bags so what we'll do is we'll get the box to the side here and we've got two of these sprues and these are basically our wheels and tires as you can see and all beautifully molded it's a very nice plastic um, it needs washing it's quite oily you can see it's got oil and stuff on it there but um, it's a very very nice plastic to work with it's neither brittle nor soft it's not hard it's you know you've got these tiny little parts like here they're easy to work with that because they don't just snap as soon as you look at them it's very very nice the one downside of this kit, which everyone talks about, are the massive sprue gates. Now you can see on here, with this little arm here for the suspension, you've got a little tiny sprue gate on each end, and then you've got a massive sprue gate, I've got yellow paint all over my fingers, and then you've got a massive sprue gate um, on the sides there. And you can see that's only a tiny little sort of one millimeter diameter shaft. So what you need to do with stuff like this, what you need is a one of these saws are very similar to it. You need a very fine saw. Something like this is going to be no use to you whatsoever. It's too, way too big. You need one of these little fine saws with fine teeth. And then what you can do is get into the side of that, get fairly near to the part, and you can just slice along like this, and you can cut through. Okay, just like that. If you try and cut it with nippers, you may well break the parts because the, because the gates are so big. 
on these smaller parts. Now stuff like this you could cut out, but you can see there, massive sprue gates. Okay, they're not very thick, but they're very, very wide. Um, and I guess that's the way he's ensured not having, um, you know, short shots or anything. If you've got a very big gate, the plastic doesn't hit a lot of resistance and you can actually cram the, uh, cram the mold well rather than have short shots and stuff. And also it means the plastic flows in fast so you don't get these cold fronts. You know, where you see the plastic has, has met, particularly on clear parts, you'll see a line where the two sides of plastic have met and they've sort of almost cured before they've come into contact and then you get a line and it's also very weak. So um, having these wide gates does actually allow the flow to, to go really well. But you can see on here, we've got some beautiful detail on these nuts and bolts. You can make that out there. Uh, there's no lettering on the tires, obviously, for copyright or whatever, but the tread patterns are beautiful and the wheels really are very, very nice made up. So that's that one. You guys have got two of those. OK, and then we've got this one here. Uh, where is the seal? Oh, this is a massive bag by the look of it. There we go. So we've got this one here. This is a, a one-off sprue. You get one of these. And again, this needs a wash, but it's a, it's a very, very nice plastic. As I say, it's not hard, it's not brittle, it doesn't just snap, um, and it's not particularly soft, so it's not like Airfix. Um, it's not like Hasegawa. It's sort of more like, you know, Revell of a few years ago. It's really lovely to work with. Very, very nice stuff indeed. So you can see here we've got a lot of detail, and you've got the tabs here giving you the numbers of the parts. And they do tend to vary through the kit. It's almost like the designer of each sprue was a different guy. You, you tend to see variations. But you can see here we've got the, the chassis rails here. And you can see this is what I was talking about with this. You can see where the parts go. It's sunken in. Okay, like these small detail parts in here. So rather than picking a part to the surface, it's actually sinking in. And then you can put some mist of surface around it and it really looks like it's part of it. And I'll show you that in a minute on a chassis. And you can see there, and on the inside, we've got a little bit of cleanup, but there's no massive ejector pin marks or anything to deal with. So it's all very nice. You can see the detail on these casings. Very, very crisp, some beautiful bolt head detail. Really, really nicely done. Okay. And as you can see here again, we've got these massive, we've got one, two, three four five six seven one two three four five six seven seven sprue connectors on that one piece and they're all like sort of three millimeters wide so that's what people get in a tiz about this kit um it's the kind of kit you you get and you you pick it up and you do a bit of work on it and then you put it down and do up something else i think if you just try to build this start to finish it would really, really wear you down because of these massive sprue gates. You, you, you know, you tend to spend, you know, 70% of your time cleaning up and 30% of your time building. But the rewards at the end are well, well worth it. Again, you've got a double sprue, so we've got two of these. I'll try and find the end of the bag, wherever it is. Um, it's unusual because normally Libor doesn't use these bags. Where is the end of the bag? There it is. So I don't want to rip the bags. I don't want to cut the bags open because I may well sell this kit because <laughs> I've already got two, as I said. Uh, as I said. So uh, we've got two of these sprues. Um, again, beautiful crisp detailing. We've got some toolbox there. Um, these are the actual beams that make up the rear. These beams here. Okay, that's what they are made up of. And you've got the centre piece there. And they do look absolutely stunning when they're done. Um, and you can see on here, we've got lots and lots of really nice detail. <clears throat> I'll give you a close-up. Look at those pulleys. It's a shame they're made in halves, but it means you get the beautiful grooves in there. And remember, this is a small company. They're not going to have, be having slide moulding and stuff. So, um, there we go. We've got the uh, These are the side supports here. These are the steadies. And then these here, as I say, these go around the outside, they're like an L section. You can see it's like a piece of um, angle iron that goes around this piece here, which has got the squares inside it that hold it out. 
and then there's the hydro, well, not the hydraulic, but the actual um, support arm that goes inside these here. You can see the detail on that gear. It's, it's just lovely. Really, really nice. Detail on the hooks. This is the I did to get this one out. This is the cab. And we can see here we've got the, the actual cab roof, got the bulkhead, the floor, the back of the cab, seat squabs there. We've got the instrument panel there by the look of it, or the cowling for it. Um, some parts there, I don't know what they are. Doors, detail on the inside the doors. And note there are, there's no ejector pin marks in them. So it makes you think, you know, if, if these guys can do it on a short run kit like this, why can't the likes of the big boys do it? Why do they have to have bloody great injector pin marks everywhere? Particularly Meng, I'm thinking of. <laughs> um, additional panel there with very faint outline to show where to put your decals. And you've got the, this is the bulkhead, so that's your interior detail there with the press, pressings in the floor. And then I think that's going to be your windscreen wipers there. Yeah, all in all, very, very nice. Moving forward, there's a lot to this kit, there's a lot of sprues in it. Um, so I think it says in the, the box of them that over 500, 570 plastic parts. So I'll try and find these again with this massive bag. Let's get this one out. Again, we've got one of these sprues. So we've got, um, this is all parts of our engine now. So we've got the engine halves here. Uh, again, this is very greasy. Um, manifolds, intake manifold, exhaust manifold. Got some pulleys here, uh, water pump by the look of it. And then we've got the sump, exhaust system, steering box, bell housing, radiator. There's the radiator and there's the shroud that goes around it. You can see we've got the the radiator detail on there. Air air cleaner, air filter, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'll just give you a quick walk around. You can see on there, that's the uh, that's the grill that goes over the radiator. You can see it's absolutely beautiful. No short shots, no flash. You know, it's just those great big sprue connectors. But you know, if you notice how clean everything is, there's no there's no flash anywhere. There's no horrible sink marks. There's no great big ejector pin marks. But you know, you've got this. Like I say, you've got the sprue clean up to deal with. But there you know, it's uh, it's really enjoyable. It's a very enjoyable build. It's a very enjoyable kit. Very rewarding because the cleanup is such a lot of work. When you've done with the cleanup and you start to assemble the assemblies, it all looks so bloody lovely. You, you, you really feel like you've achieved something. You know, it's not a shake and bake kit. You see the detail on there. Looks, it's, uh, it is a lovely, lovely model. They all are. Um, Really, really nice. Okay, and then we've got another doubler here. Two of these. I guess you knew what doubler meant. Some people call them mirrored sprues. I, I, I tend to not think of them as mirrored sprues. If they were mirrored sprues, they would be um, the opposite, wouldn't they? So uh, you can see this has been... The mould just ends. Doop. I thought it had been cut off, but it's not. The end, the mould just ends. You can see we've got a seam there. So um, maybe they added these bits on later. But again, lots and lots of tiny little greeblies. And you can see here, if you remember before, I was talking about the the massive, um, you know, on, on this sprue here, you've got the massive, massive numbers on the parts. And then you come to this one, and they're all tiny again. And you've got to remember that some of these parts, um, what he does, rather than just have three lots of 67, He's got 60, if I can catch it in the light, 67 there, 67 two, 67 three. Okay, so um, look out for that. But again, you can see this shovel here, look how lovely and clean and crisp and everything that is. It's really, really nice, beautifully done. And the ax. And we've got some lovely detail on those back plates there, or the swivels for the front hubs. It's one of the rear drums, leaf springs, axles, some lovely checker plate there. All very nicely done. 
all very beautiful. I'm very, very positive about this kit, as you can tell, because um, I love them. And we've got our clear parts here. I'm not going to bother getting these out, but they're, they are very nice. They're absolutely fine. Um, you see windscreen panels there. You see even through the plastic bag. They're very clear. They're very lovely. Um, some brass here. Look at that in a minute. We've got this screw here, which looks... Uh, it's quite involved. Get this through here, we've got our front fenders from mudguards, if you want to call them that. And we've got our grills there for the sides of the engine, and then these will ones go up under the fenders. Sides there for the uh, rear body, steering wheel, um, light guards, gear stick, some more windscreen wipers by the look of it. Um, and then we've got some other bits and pieces, air cleaner by the look of it, another pulley bit. Oh, this is the compressor here, sorry. This here is your compressor. So um, that's, the, that's a little kit in itself. And as I say, um, Mirror Models actually make that. It may be under the LZ Models label. I'll have a look. I have got some. But they're, um, it's a beautiful little model itself. Um, and the other thing you'll notice on here is these vents are, they are kind of hollowed out. Quite difficult to see but they are they are hollowed out so um and the, the the checker plate on top of there is stunning you see there or diamond plate should i call it it's not checker plate is it um so yeah really really nice and then our final plastic sprue now this is something that i do like about it this is this is actually made to fit the box because when you turn the box over it doesn't come out so you've got Grab all of that plastic and drag it out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so you've got your plastic sprue supporting your box. I always thought it was supposed to be the other way around, but uh, never mind. Um, but it is. Um, I'm not. As I say, I've got three of these, and not a single one has a broken part. Sorry, none of them have a single broken part. Is what I should say. So this is basically your wrecker. There you go. I said it basically. Um, this is your wrecker here, and. Believe me, this all goes together and it just looks so nice. You've got the front fenders there, you've got the rear, sorry, the front mug guards there, rear mug guards there, you've got the rear panel there, obviously the bed, a little bit of sinkage on here which you need to deal with, uh, which I've dealt with on my Mr. Surfacer. Leave it a couple of days to dry and then sand it all back nice and flat. And then you've got the front panel there, um, bits and pieces, these are the side pieces. So on the sides of the bed here, you can see there you've got these vertical and you've got this, this it's basically a tubular steel cross, a, a box section steel frame with sheet steel welded to it. Um, and that's what that is. You've got the, the frame there and then that glues onto those panels there to give you that sort of look rather than have it all molded in one. And it does look stunning because you get the very sharp corners that you can't, you don't sort of get when, you, when it's molded. But it's um it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful, uh, really nice detail, really really nice and beautifully done. And as I say, you build this, you take your time, it rewards you, it really does. Um, these rear mud guards, they're not rear mud guards, um, mud flaps, they are absolutely stunning. Um, I'm going to show you mine in a minute. Woohoo, <laughs> Mrs. Uh, you'll be absolutely amazed how good they look. Um, Okay, so in this bag here, we've got some goodies. Wow, normally I spend half an hour trying to open these bags, don't I, because the camera's on. So we've got some goodies here. So we've got the, the photo etch parts here. And these are our bases for our tool trays. So they're nice. You just fold the corners up and solder them. They look lovely. Um, you've got your um, fan there. That's the air intake for the top of the inlet. And then you've got some straps and bits and pieces there going on. And then we've got some gears here that you can use or you can use the plastic parts. I think I used the small plastic parts and the photo etch big parts on mine. Then you've got some string here for your, uh, for your wrecker. Some photo etch parts there. I'm not sure what they're for. I can't remember now. Um, and then you've got some nice chain here, which is rusty. I've never seen this in a kit before, but it really is nice. Look at that. It's rusty. It's beautiful. It's really, really nice. And uh, it's going to take, even if you want to paint it, it's just going to take paint better than the, the general shiny ones you get. 
So yeah, that's what you're getting in the kit there. So we'll put that away. We'll put our photo etch away. I don't know why I've got a couple of bits of string there. He could have given us one length of string and I'm sure we could have managed to cut it. And then we got our decal sheet here, which is very sort of Tamiya-esque, if you ask me. They are individual decals, it's not just one decal sheet, so you don't have to cut them out individually. Um, you can see there, you've got your allied markings there, Ordnance Road Patrol. Um, I'm just looking here. I was going to say we didn't have any, but we have, they're here. Um, we have got, you can't see them on the camera, I can't quite pick them up, but there's decals there for the instrument panel. They are there. So, um, and then you've got the, your, your listings for the sides there for the weight and everything. But there we go. That's your decal sheet. So what I'll do now, I'll turn the camera off, I'll get some bits and pieces up together and I'll show you a part built one of these, which is, um, which is always nice to see. So I'll do that now and then I'll see you in a second. And there we go, I managed to get it all back in the box, which is a challenge in itself. But uh, this yeah, probably could go a little bit better, but uh, there we go. The other thing I wanted to say, uh, I mentioned about these huge screw connector points, and they are big. Um, and Libor listened to, the, listened to the modelers out there and made some changes. And I think he actually even changed his supplier. Um, he did talk to me about it, but I'm not going to um, divulge information. But um, if I just show you the sprues now from a Thunder model of Scammel, you can see now, you can see that this is another one I'm working on. Um, you can see completely changed, much more normal, you know, the thin spindly sprues rather than the heavy junky stuff. And you've got the, the smaller connection points as normal with any plastic kit. But again, we've got beautiful moulding, really, really nice, clean, flashless, um, got some lovely detail on these front tires here with the Goodyear and the tire size on there and everything. So uh, and you can see on these supports here for the front fenders, you've got the um, you've got the bolt head detail and everything there. So it's it's all very very nice. Um, and as I say, I know he, he's changed his. So he obviously doesn't have a molding factory. He contracts subcontracts to work out, and uh, he's changed his supplier. So as you can see, there's a massive difference. And this plastic is still lovely to work with. But having said that, I think I prefer this stuff. Um, if you've never built a mirror models kit, you won't know what I mean. It's really nice to work with. It's just very, very forgiving. I'll try and show you in a minute when I show you the, uh, the built up parts. Okay, before we move on and look at the, the parts I've already built, I thought I'd just quickly show you this, um, this update set. This is a highly detailed and accurate set for the Diamond T record. This will, this will cover the soft top or the hard top. And um, this is number 35439, and this is LZ models, or LZ models. Um, they're, as I say, they're all the same same company. It's all Libor's company. So uh, have a look on there, lzmodels.com. Um, so basically in here, you're getting a set of instructions, very similar to the ones you get in the kit, but with a couple of colour images, which is nice to see how it all goes together. Um, so you've got that, and then you've actually got the little added part here, and you've got a tow bar assembly, a little V, V A frame that goes in for the towing the front, and on the back you get a photograph of the real thing as reference to show you how it's how it's used. Uh, I'm sure you've all seen jeeps with the A frame folded up on the front against the grill. Well, that's that's a similar kind of thing ish. Um, so there's the instructions for that, and then we've got in here we've got some resin jerry cans. We've got our resin parts here for our A-frame, some more rusty chain, and then we've got the uh, bits and pieces here for our, I think that's for our light guards and for our jerry cans. So um, all very nicely done indeed. Okay, and then got some diamond plate here or checker plate, whatever you want to call it. That's going to be for the, uh, I guess that's going to be going on the fuel tanks. Doesn't show, <laughs> it doesn't say, but um, there we go. Oh, there we go, it's going on here, I'm guessing. And then uh, another sheet of photo etch here, all very brightly done, and then covered both sides in plastic. I'll give you a close up of that. You can see you've got all the frame here to replace the um, the framing around the, um, the actual wrecker rig itself. Um, 
lots and lots of bits and pieces of brass. These are the folded up supports for the bottom of the chassis. More um, parts of the uh, wrecker there. <clears throat> Got some more checker plate covers. And there we go. And then we can see in the instructions <clears throat> that we've got basically got um, you got some PE uh, parts to replace the actual parts that go into the chassis, which are these parts here. Okay, so you can replace those beautiful plastic mouldings with some photo etch if you want to. And then you've got the rear bumperettes. You can replace the plastic bumperettes, which I don't have fitted to either of mine with the with the photo etch. Um, then we've got these are the inside the windscreen. There's a little there's a lat on the uh, fold down windscreen for the soft top. There's this fold down that's the handle for the over centre latch. So you can replace that with photo etch. And here you've got these light guards. Oh, the plastic ones are lovely. Uh, I'll show you one here which I don't think is cleaned up. No, it's not cleaned up yet. But um, the plastic ones I think are lovely. Um, a bit of standing around the outside just to thin them out. I don't know. Um, but it says here use the plastic parts to shape them and then on the top of the fenders you've got these thin side plates here that you can actually glue them into or you can use the PE side plates and cut those off. So there's your choices there. Um, this is the, the frame that goes underneath. This is the frame here. Okay, so you can replace that with PE. Um, there's light guards going on there. And you've got this trim for the top of the bumper. So... <clears throat> Or is it just the bolt heads? PE21, PE21, it's just the bolt heads. So you've got bolt heads there to go along around the top edge of the bumper there. Um, I'll probably use punched out sprue. And then you've got the, the tread plate there going in the sides for the steps. And then coming over, you've got the supports here that go up inside the fenders. You can replace those with photo etch. You can see them there. Um, we've got a spare wheel holder, is that there? I'm not sure what that is. Uh, and then you can see that down here you've got the parts all built up and there's another picture there of the, the A-frame chucked in the back of the truck. Uh, and then you've got a gun holder for the cab. Um, and then this here is all PE, as I say. And it's telling you here how to cut it up. And this, these are the uh, supports for the uh, oxygen, oxyacetylene bottles in the bottom of the actual winch itself. And I'll show you those now. I haven't used them. So yeah, this set is available... <clears throat> but I would say, I would suggest the kit is so lovely, you don't really need it. There's a couple of bits in there which are nice to have, like those light frames and stuff. But I feel you could build this kit out of the box, which is what I've done. Uh, which I know you're probably all going, oh my god, Nigel built a model out of the box. Yep. I don't think this kit needs anything. Just a bit of a bit of TLC. So here's the, um, this is my cargo truck chassis. You can tell it's a cargo truck because these areas here are infilled, whereas the wrecker has a, um, has a support there. And you can see here, if I show you close up, I've got some bubbles in it, but uh, where those parts actually go into the chassis, where they sink in, and you just grab us a Mr. Surfacer and it gives them a very nice thin look. You see what I mean with these, these details here that are glued in? Okay, it's also a very positive location. You can see there those tiny little air valves on there. You've got the winch there, it still turns. Leaf springs, you can see we've got a seam around the middle, but it's no problem just to clean that up. As I say, leave all this pivoting. Okay, and then when you put it down on its wheels, you can make sure you... Because if you glue it in place like that, and then when you put it on its wheels, you'll have the back two wheels touching and the front wheels, or vice versa. So leave those, those arms off until the very end. Transfer box in there. You can see how beautifully detailed that is with the, trans, with the transmission brake. See all the detail around there. So that's my cargo truck. And then my wrecker truck chassis is here. This one is almost finished. Um, again, as you see. But these leave those arms off so it can pivot. Um, you've got the transfer box there. Piece of dust or something in the middle of it. The transfer box there, and you can see how it looks with a coat of black paint. It looks quite incredible. It's really, really nice. All the detail there, all the bolt heads and everything. Front axle. Now, to make this steer, as I say, the, the end plates you just sandwich the balls on the end, 
and then here on the ends of the um, track rod okay just drill through and put a brass pin in there and what you can do is just glue the brass pin to the actual track rod end or what you could do is make up a little disc and um, like a washer put it over the brass pin and then glue that on and that kind of makes your top out. If you don't understand go back you'll see many one of my first videos I did a video on how to make the scammel steer uh, and you'll see that I've done it on there on the three of them. <laughs> um, but yeah all in all it's, it's beautiful look at the detail around those rear axles and how lovely those leaf springs look. You know it, it's and for the price of them they are so reasonably priced the detail you're getting and the work you know if you think pound per hour of enjoyment it's uh it's a very cheap model that's that drive shaft i was talking about for the um for the winch okay so there's the chassis now if I remember i was saying this cargo bed at the back looks really really nice you can see what the handles on here we've got some little handles i've added there we've got the handles around the back then we've got those beautiful mud flaps with the handles that you make out of wire which I've added in there they really are lovely they really do make it stand you know stand it off set it off and you've got the front mud guards there and all the lovely chassis underneath all beautiful this area here this is the actual um, mainframe for the for the booms and everything you can see that assembles up into a a little model in its own and you can see you get these in photo etch but you, you could just use the plastic parts you could you know you don't really need the photo etch you can build this out of the box there's lovely eyelets on the end here chain drive in there you can see that stunning detail on there which is really nice radiator <clears throat> always a good part of a truck kit and uh yeah, really sets it off. Really does set it off beautifully. You've got the radiator grill on the back of there as well. So there we go. The engine. Engine is uh, really, really nice. This has just had a coat of green primer or grey primer or whatever it is. Um, but you can see it's lovely little detail around the sump and everything. Just waiting for a top coat. I'm not sure what colour the engine should be. Maybe someone could tell me that. Um, this is the cab. You see, you've got the bulkhead here with the wiring. Uh, the, these old American vehicles, they had a sort of a major um, sub, if you like. They had a big, a big fibre board um, block with screws in it. It was kind of a manifold for the wiring. So the, the, the cables came into this one cable, and then all the other wires came off it. So uh, I know because my Jeep's got them. You've got the instrument panel there and you can see that beautifully detailed support for the steering column and the, the actual levers and everything look at them they are beautiful really really nice really fine beautifully to scale and there's the window latch mechanisms there then we've got sorry i'm saving the compressor for last and we've got these booms that go on the back and these are the ones that the you have the pulleys on the end and the cables will go over and you can see that there's two of them here and they're going to sort of go on there like that sort of thing or like that is it and um but you can see you know those great big sprue connectors you just sand them off and they're they're gone for good and they're it's what's left is really fine beautifully molded plastic which looks absolutely stunning in my opinion and then here's one of the um, side supports so you've got your you've got your hole in there and then you have a pin to go in that hole and you've got the holes in here and you can that's, that, that's how it's going to be retracted and then you've got all those holes so you can have it down in a display if you want if you want to so that's really nice and then finally here it is the compressor now this is to me this just makes the model it's beautiful look at that what a lovely little thing you can buy this as a kit on its own you don't have to buy the the record to get this if you want one of these for a diorama or something look up lz models or mirror models and he sells these as a kit on its own absolutely gorgeous look at it 
really really nice little spark plug in the top there and everything absolutely beautiful little fuel tank for it you know we want a spark plug lead on there and it'll really really set it off make it look lovely and there we go that'll be a gauge on the end there <laughs> really really nice so there we go guys that has been a review of the mirror models hard top um what was it <laughs> this is the soft top soft top version here's the kit this has been a review of this kit the uh, t969a um, wrecker the hard top cab and then i've shown you parts of the cargo truck and parts of the soft top but everything i've just shown you other than the cab this cab is actually wider than the cab you get in these. So um, yeah, everything I've shown you, in fact, I can show you that now. This is the cab back for the hard top. And you can see how much wider that one is for the uh, for the soft top. So for some reason, the soft top cab was wider. So um, there we go. But that's basically what we looked at. That's kit number 35802, which is the hard top version. The soft top, the soft top version is this one here which is 35801 okay and then we've got the hard top cargo truck which is 35803 and i believe there is a soft top cargo truck as well and then there's another there's a late cargo truck and cargo truck with no wheels and cargo truck with square wheels and yeah you know what i mean there's lots of them go and have a look on the website mirror models there are many many very unusual models on there but they are they're a bit of a challenge to build, so if you like a challenge, they're, you're going to love them. Um, if you don't like shake and bake kits like I don't, then you're going to absolutely love them. But as I say, it's a sort of model, get yourself one. I mean, I've been building these for probably six or seven years, and I literally pick them up and do an hour's work, and then I put them away again. And it's, 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 and I've, I built the chassis together, so the chassis came up basically together, um, and then sort of concentrated on the record to get all this all this bit done and everything but um you can see how beautiful they're, they're just beautiful this is all out of the box nothing i've shown you has got any extras on it at all it's just all careful modeling careful sanding careful assembly and a bit of filling here and there job done so um anyway thanks for watching i hope you've enjoyed that and uh as i say i'm going to probably be starting later on today on another titanic video because all my sprugo is starting to cure and everything, and I'm looking at getting those uh, propeller shafts on. So I'll see you all later. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.